Hi, this is James Valvis, and I'm going to be reading a story to you today. I've decided that Sundays will be story days, so Sunday stories. I don't have as many stories as I do poems. And that goes without saying. I have thousands of poems, both published and unpublished, and I only have maybe three or four or five hundred short stories. I don't really know. I've lost count of them, but there are not that many, and there are not nearly as many published it's a lot harder to publish fiction than it is poetry for the simple reason of space. There's just less room for po uh, stories than there are poems. You can publish 50 poems in a, um, a literary journal and only a handful of short stories. And so it's much more competitive to publish fiction than it is poetry. Uh, and I've uh, focused most of my attention over my writing life on poetry which is kind of ironic because I didn't start out to be a poet. I started out to be a fiction writer. And to this day, I've had far, far more success writing poetry than I have fiction. Probably for those reasons, but also because I'm just generally inclined toward minimalism as a writing style. And writing, you know, when you when you deal with minimalism, it's, it's a much more compressed form of literary art. And therefore... Uh, you uh, tend toward the poetry or prose poem flash fiction spectrum of the um, of the art. This is a flash story that I'm going to be reading today, and uh, a flash story is usually considered any story under a thousand words, although sometimes it's fifteen hundred words, and sometimes under five hundred words. It really depends on which place you're talking about and how they define it but generally speaking it's under uh, it's under a thousand words this story happens to be under 500 words because I believe the place where it was published Vestal Review only takes stories that are under 500 words I've written a lot of stuff that's under 500 words but most of them I keep to be poems I figure 500 words is about where a poem ends and a flash fiction story begins and a lot of times when I write a poem that is over 500 words I just decide that you know this isn't this isn't poetry anymore this is prose and I just take out the lines and and I let it be uh, prose and it's not that the lines aren't there and, and, and aren't um, able to be put back or that they weren't necessary in the first place but it's just that they're not absolutely vital to reading the piece uh, so uh, a lot of times I would just you know prefer to try to sell that as as fiction rather than than poetry at that point uh, because uh, it's it's kind of odd because in some ways it's a lot easier to it's easier to publish a short work of prose than it is a long poem even though they're the same exact piece they're they're not any, they're not any different they're the same exact story the same exact amount of words but if you write a three or four page poem um as compared to uh you know a one or two page prose piece that is the same number of words well you'll have much greater success publishing it as prose than you will as poetry despite the fact that they're the same thing as part of that is because the more you uh space you take up on in the journal in number of pages the more the less likely they are to accept it because they just don't want to spend the time on it they they would rather spend the the space on it they don't um they would rather not spend three or four pages on a single poem but one or two pages on a story yeah that sounds like a good deal to them so that's part of the issue the story itself uh which is called the red bird is an old story of mine it's dates back to the earliest days of my writing um, back when I was visiting and um, a member of the Gainesville Writers Workshop and I was writing intermittently and I was working a lot and I, I moved to Michigan and I had uh, all kinds of problems there I had problems uh, earning a living I had problems with my wife who was unfaithful to me multiple times and uh, we were young, we were poor, we were barely making it. 
walking, barely making it, uh, you know, barely keeping a roof over our heads and barely, um, you know, surviving. We had no money for leisure or anything else. And, and she just, uh, she wasn't prepared for that kind of sacrifice in a relationship. And so she uh, began to behave badly. But the the uh, the story itself is based on that time and that time that I went to Michigan and uh, it's not straight autobiography but it has some some uh, elements of autobiography in there and uh, but it's, it's it's written by maybe I'm 23 or 24 when I'm writing it and it may have been written slightly after I returned to Florida from Michigan so I'm, it was probably no longer with my wife at this point. And I remember I'd written the story and I'd kind of filed it away. And I, and I went to go read for the first time at a place called the Civic Media Center in Gainesville, Florida. And I'd never writ, uh, read in front of... Uh, no, I don't take that back. I'd read one time in front of a crowd in my life. And... I was extremely nervous. I chose this story to read to them, and, and it was uh, I was shaking. My hands were shaking. It was hard. It had a I had a hard time reading the story because my hands were shaking so bad, and the page was moving up and down. But uh, when I got done reading, it was, it was like this silence that came across the room, and and people were like, and then they exploded into applause. And it must have been like thirty or thirty people like crammed into that tiny library, um, and they were just really impressed by it, and. I guess because they, you know, they took one look at me, and I still had my army haircut, and I, I looked, you know, I looked, was very young and and uh, devilishly handsome. Uh, no, not really, but <laughs> I was I was young, and I I just uh, I don't think that they were expecting somebody of that age and that um, kind of lack of artic artistic pretensions um, to produce work of this nature and of this style and of this content it's just it's not a story that you would expect to come out of somebody like me um at least how i appeared and so you know i i eventually published the uh the story many years later in fact in a um in the online journal vestal review um for which they, they, I think they paid me some amount of money for it. I, I don't remember, but it, it was a, you know, it's a very good literary journal. I mean, they they take something under a percent of what they receive. It's, and uh, lots of really really fine writers have you know, had material in that journal. And so, um, anyway, I hope you uh, like the story. Uh, please um, share it around if you want to, and and uh, in general. Um, you know, I dedicate it to that to that young man who was so scared uh, to read it in public um, all those years ago. Okay. The Red Bird by James Valdes. Trouble. Wife looks at me, eyes black as hate. She's got a degree. I dropped out of high school. No matter, but she wants it all. Dreamer. That's what they call it. She's a dreamer. I'm in trouble. We haven't talked in a week. No food. I spent my last five on a gas just to drive around. No job. Neither of us. Last week I lost my job. Randy said he was sorry. I threw a punch. Missed. Randy didn't. I went down. Then they fired me. I never touched anyone. Randy still has his job. My wife is fucking Randy. Randy was a friend, big lips, that's what I remember, huge lips that talk and talked. I brought him home one night, those lips talking, to my wife. I was drinking Budweiser, my wife was drinking rum, Randy was drinking Pepsi, bastard, he wanted to get it up. My father has money, that's what Randy said. Yeah, yeah, my wife said. He wetted those lips. She inched closer. I looked out the window. A bird was there. A red bird. The bird flew away. Did you see that bird? I said. Yeah, yeah. My wife said. How much money does your father have? Lots, Randy said. Randy was lying. I'd seen Randy's father's trailer. 
The only thing he had lots of was roaches. I'm going to get more beer, I said. Get more rum, my wife said. She crossed her legs. Randy looked at her. She was looking at Randy. You didn't have to be a genius. I walked outside. It was cold. The trees were dead. I started my car, drove around the corner, parked, got out. I returned to my bedroom window. They were there. She got undressed. He got undressed. A sticker picked, pricked me. I looked at my arm. It was bleeding. Fuck it. I looked at them again. She had mounted. She was really moving. She never did with me anymore. I got an erection. She looked up, saw me. She screamed. I didn't run. What good was it? I just walked. I got into my car, drove. Next day, she was sitting on the couch, drunk. What did you expect? She said. Nothing, I said. I walked past her. God damn you, she screamed. She hit me. My mouth bled. It tasted salty. She hit me again, a ringing in my ears. She cried. I walked out, slammed the door. I went to work. Parts come, came down the assembly line fast. Randy walked up. I wasn't angry. Really, I wasn't. Then he said, sorry. That got me. The word sorry, and I took my swing. Missed. You know the rest. A week later, my wife stands. Good luck, I say. It's the last thing I'll say to her. Yeah, she says, leaves. I hear Randy in the hallway. She'll keep at it, I think. Every man, lie, dream, curse. I look out the window. The bird is back. The beautiful red bird. It flies away. This was James Valvis reading his short story, The Red Bird. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this story. And thank you for listening. And as always, God bless you.